Hallo, hallo. Ready. Ask me sweet questions. <lacht> Hi, my name is Pierre. My name is Jeremy. Uh, my name is Oliver. Uh, hey, I'm Niels. I'm the 3D artist of Axe and Flux. I used to be a bartender, but now I'm responsible for everything you see in the game. I'm the game slash level designer here at Axe and Flux, which means I'm building all the levels and the world that our players will play in. A uh, former photographer turned game developer. Uh, I started this company and worked as a game designer at first, uh, creating the demo level that many of you played. But now all I do is uh, push around tasks and make people do their work on time. I'm the programmer of the team. Um, before working for X and Flux, I pretty much did nothing but learning. So uh, no, I wasn't a photographer or barkeeper. Uh, I'm pretty much responsible for everything in the game that's uh, supposed to work. Um, so I pretty much made the game. Yeah. Describe your artistic process like a cook. Um, so far it was like we didn't have a concept artist, so it was like everything is a bit made up on the spot and just what's in the fridge is uh, going on the plate after that. And um, now we have a concept artist, Robert, and with that I know the final uh, recipe, so um, the way there is a bit easier. Describe the game's design using only movie titles. Uh, I would probably say Mad Max without cars combined with World War C. Label the production experience using a game title. Getting over it. Describe the game's code base using a metaphor. The code base in the game is a bit like uh, traffic in India, where everything is just chaotic, but uh, in the end it seems to work out, so that's something. Which enemy would you love to add, but can't? I would like to uh, add the Egyptian sun god uh, Amun-Ra, but at the moment that's outside of the scope. Which favorite vacation spot would you add as a level? I once climbed a volcano in Indonesia and I would think it would make for a pretty epic level. Describe a major pivot the game underwent. That's actually a sad one. Uh, initially the game should have been a Half-Life clone, uh, but it was too big of a feat to pull off. So yeah, that's just an unfulfilled wish in my heart that we'll hopefully do one day. What was the biggest challenge you've encountered? Um, the biggest challenge I encountered was um, pretty much uh, for editor tools I created for Jeremy, but uh, that's kind of boring, I guess. Uh, I'm having a tough time with our enemies, especially since they are physics based. Um, so they have to fly around, they, they get knocked back everywhere and um, there are many of them on the screen at once. So that's giving me quite a lot of headaches. Reveal a dirty 3D art solution hidden in the game. Um, a little hidden secret is that Jeremy, our uh, game designer and level artist, uh, turned the stairs upside down and now they're ramps. Imagine an absurd power-up you'd love in the game. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Call of Duty Zombies games and uh, they have some like chain lightning shots and stuff like that which uh, would be really fun with massive hordes of enemies. If your work computer could talk, what would it say? Stop shouting at me. Please kill me. <laughs> What's the most bizarre coding hack you've used so far? Also, also in our game is ja nichts hacky. Also, 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 also hacky, was, was, one thing I did and I never changed so far, actually, is um, everything that breaks in the game from uh, walls to crates and... Um, what's some f***ing heist? Vase of English. Pots. <laughs> <laughs> One thing in the game 
that is kind of hacky or kind of fun, funny, I would say, is um, everything that breaks in the game, from walls to crates to pots. Um, the game pretty much thinks that everything is a wall. Um, so crates and pots are pretty much just walls that break. Um, just because uh, the first thing we implemented were the walls that can break or the floors that can break. And now everything that breaks in the game is pretty much just a breakable wall. Hmm. Which art tool would you like to have in real life? I think I would like to have a Ctrl C out of many art tools just for the little mistakes I make every day. Have you ever dreamt you're in a game? Which one? All the time. Uh, I usually have really long sessions when I get into a game and the last one was Crusader Kings and after like a maybe five six seven hour session uh, my head just couldn't stop and uh, suddenly I was a ruler of some ancient province. Which app would you like to remove from your workflow? PowerPoint. This thing drives me nuts. Which part of life would you automate like a script? Uh, my morning procedure though that probably already is kind of automated since it's pretty much the same sequence from day to day. But uh, I would just like to skip all that and automate it that way if that's the question. Name the ingredients of a fictional cactus cocktail. Mm. I think of course uh, there would be cactus juice in it, um, a form of tequila or mezcal, uh, lime juice and for garnish I would put in a prickly pear. Which game character would you choose as a life coach? Uh, at first I probably thought about some leader from civilization, which would be a bit of a cheat because those are real people. Uh, but that would be boring, so maybe Kate 6 from Destiny would be fun. What do the contents of your fridge reveal about you? It's a very sad and desolated fridge actually with a lot of caffeine drinks and not much food probably game developer fridge. Name three essential snacks for a long coding night. Uh, when I'm coding through the night, I'm not really eating snacks, but I'm drinking a lot. A lot of uh, energy drinks and iced tea. Though I like to eat chocolate during, uh, during the night. Yeah, I don't know why, but I like chocolate. What's the biggest myth about 3D artists? When I talk with people and say that I'm a 3D artist at the game studio, they always uh, ask me like, how is the programming? And yeah, I'm not a programmer, that's Niels. <laughs> What's the weirdest misconception about your job? Well, I don't think most people understand what a game designer actually does. So everyone just assumes uh, either I make art or program or whatever. And it's really hard to explain like how I have to dis design the rules and lay out everything. So I guess the whole job is a weird misconception. Why be a producer when you could design games? Somebody's got to do it. If you never became a coder, what would you be? Jobless. <laughs>What will you play during the holiday season? Um, oh, there are many games. Um, first of all, I'm gonna play uh, Assassin's Creed Mirage. I make a replay of Witcher. Uh, definitely more Baldur's Gate 3. I have Assassin's Creed Odyssey and uh, Valhalla on the plate. Then there's the new God of War DLC I have to play also. Hopefully some Lies of P. Jedi Survivor I have to finish. Uh, then I need to play Rocket League with friends, uh, Bread and Fred with friends. Uh, the finals? And of course, uh, Baldur's Gate 3. What is your favorite game of the year? My personal game of the year would be uh, Bread and Fred with uh, Jeremy. Also Baldur's Gate 3. I'm indecisive. I enjoyed the new Robocop game a lot, but might also go for Tree Pang 2. Probably uh, Risk of Rain Returns. Which game would you like to experience again? I think I would like to delete my memory for uh, playing um, The Witcher 3. Baldur's Gate 3. Outer Wilds. Any last words? Go and buy cactus. <laughs> Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> Stay sharp. Oh yeah, Choka Co. Bitter abonnieren. You play.
Ja. <lacht> Baby. Nee, chaotic as. Mhm. Ka <lacht> 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 ich mir gar keine Gedanken gemacht gerade. <lacht>